The first Cars film is two grueling, boring hours. Why do they have tongues? Cars is a boring world that has no reason to be about cars. Someone's gotta do something about this. And that person is me. No, no shoes in the apartment. You sure about that? I'm American made, but life serving me. Guys, it's time to defend cars. Let's get started. You see, there's been this recent uprising against cars. What started it was the conversation about the implications of the car's anatomy. As you can see, they are cars, but they have eyes and tongues, so everyone automatically compares them to humans. And that's where everyone goes wrong. You see, you have to look at cars as its own universe. You can't compare it to our human universe. Look at Sally's behind. That isn't a tram stamp, that's a bumper sticker. But there was something strange in the car universe that uh i've never noticed before in cars one there are planes in this movie as well and if there's planes then why are there baby flying cars in this scene wouldn't it make more sense to have mini planes flying around rather than these mini flying cars is this a different race of cars with wings does this imply that cars grow out of their wings these are the questions that are valid not did cars genocide humans and take over earth so let's disregard the whole cars anatomy thing people still think that cars doesn't hold up with the other legendary pixar movies i'm here to prove you wrong you see there's two main things that make pixar movies so legendary a creative story and humor and the fact that cars isn't seen in a higher regard you know compared to ratatouille or incredibles is honestly a sin because the best joke that pixar has made is in cars they say it was amazing he won three piston cups. <laughs> he did what in his cup? He did what in his cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You also have the restroom bit where the girl's line is a lot longer. This movie delivers on humor. I do not care what you say. And it also delivers on emotions. We learn right off the bat that Lightning has a big ego. From the second that he exits Max's booty hole, we see his confidence. By the way, no ordinary commentary pointed out the funniest thing about this intro. Wait a minute, who knocked on that door? Did somebody <laughs> just freaking just boom, boom, boom with their face? It's racing time, and like I said, Lightning has a fat ego, and it bites him in the ass. Lightning refuses to get his tire changed, which leads to his tire popping and him getting in a three-way tie, which could have easily been an easy win. By the way, there's also another great joke about how they're tongue-tied. Anyways, this three-way tie leads to a rematch in California between the three cars for the Piston Cup. But on the way there, Lightning slips out of Max's booty hole like a poop and gets lost and ends up in Radiator Springs. And oh my god, Radiator Springs is the reason why Cars is one of my favorite comfort movies. I think most people have Ratatouille as their Pixar comfort movie, and honestly... That's pretty valid, but Radiator Springs is significantly smaller than Paris and less crowded, and it has Sally. Radiator Springs literally has everything you need. Gas, tires, Sally, drugs, military weapons, and Paris just has what, a rat and a fancy telephone pole? People watch Star Wars and wish that they can go to Naboo, and people watch Jurassic Park wishing they can go to Dinosaur. That is me with Radiator Springs. I wish I could go there. That's where he said it. <sighs> Imagine if that was real, guys. Let me tell you how cool Doc Hudson is as a character. So after Lightning accidentally ruins Radiator Springs and its road, he gets arrested and gets thrown into court the next day. Then Doc enters the court as the judge. He immediately says, get him out, I know his type race car. But Sally is like, no, he needs to fix the road at least. Look at the road. Doc says, fine, we'll let him do the road, but he needs to get out of here. And from this scene, you can kind of tell something's going on. Why does Doc want him out so quick? What's he hiding? <laughs> 
Is he actually a nurse? Well, the next time that we see Doc, he does something baller. He challenges McQueef to a race. Doc says, if you beat me, you can run free. But if I win, you gotta redo the road. Because Lightning did a horrible job at fixing the road. So Lightning is cocky as shit and says, yeah, grandpa, I get it. You haven't seen some cheeks clap in years, but I don't think these are the cheeks you want clap today. So we set off to the dirt track and the race starts, but Doc isn't moving. And everyone's like, what the Doc doing? Then Doc is like, this Lightning McBeef is squashed because I just humbled him. And sure enough, Lightning crashed off road because he doesn't know how to drift. And then Doc is like, Sometimes to go right, you gotta turn left. So now Lightning has to finish fixing the road for Radiator Springs. Anyways, here comes the big reveal. A bit later in the movie, Lightning snoops into Doc's garage and sees that Doc has won three piston cups. He did what in his cup? It turns out Doc was a race car legend, AKA the fabulous Hudson Hornet. While Lightning is snooping around, Doc pulls up and catches Lightning in his garage and is like, get out, bitch. Then Lightning is like, you were the, you were the, the baby. Let's go. Then we get a surprisingly well-written scene. So Lightning is like, Doc, you have three piston cups. Then Doc is like, he did what? Sorry. Doc says that his piston cups at the end of the day are just empty cups. And Lightning's face is like, huh? Then Lightning is like, why did you quit, you nerd? Then Doc is like, I didn't quit after my accident. I recovered just fine. They quit on me. And then Doc reveals that he stayed in Radiator Springs because these are good people who care about each other and he should try caring for others sometime. But then Lightning claps back and says, I'm selfish? The people here don't even know who you really are. Boom. Cinema. This is actually probably the best scene in the movie in terms of like, you know, dialogue and drama. Because all Lightning cares about in his life right now is just winning the Piston Cup. And then seeing that Doc is just, it just has him laying around like any other cup. It's making him trip balls. But then Lightning has a point because Doc was like, these people care about each other. And then he's like, you don't even, they don't even know the real you, bro. Brosephine, we know you're a nurse. But yeah, great scene. It kind of makes Lightning McQueen, you know, it kind of plants a seed in his head of like what really matters in life, you know, is him having no one in his corner really worth just having his own personal achievements. So after this scene, Lightning actually starts to be more mindful that he's been selfish and he starts to do some kind things for the town. But then it happens. All of a sudden we see helicopters and cars swarming into Radiator Springs. They found Lightning. The music Media is there and they're like get to the track the race is tomorrow and among all this chaos lightning just wants to say bye but is kind of pushed away by the media and the, and the the paparazzis and then lightning and sally give a sad look to each other and lightning mcleaves want a break from the end before we continue i need to talk about mater real quick i was shocked on how well his character held up i kind of expected re-watching this mater was just going to be a goofball the whole time but the dude has some very wholesome scenes. For example, after Lightning and Mater tip the tractors over, they have a quick conversation and Mater drops this line on Lightning. I know that I made a good choice. And what? My best friend. Also, Mater makes a quick remark to Lightning that he wants to ride a helicopter, and that's like one of his dreams. And Lightning is like, yeah, sure, buddy, I can work something out. Anyways, back to the present time, Lightning gets inside Mac and leaves to the track for the race tomorrow. But we cut to the gang, and the gang is sad that he's leaving, and then Mater drops this. I didn't get to say goodbye to him. Everyone is depressed besides Doc. Then we quickly learn that Doc was the one that exposed Lightning's location. Bro, Doc's Lightning in his own town. Then Sally finds out and goes off on Doc, because now she can't get rear-ended. Then Doc is like, well, go fuck yourself then. But you can kind of tell he feels bad. Anyways, here we are, the Piston Cup. <laughs> Lightning is hyping himself up like he usually does, but this time he's also daydreaming about Radiator Springs. By the way, earlier in the movie, Lightning made his team quit quit because he was being like a selfish prick and also the two other racers are strip aka the king who's actually a really cool character like he gave lightning mcqueen some pretty good advice earlier in the movie he's just a chill dude but on the other hand the chick guy the the, the green car mustache guy he's not a cool guy anyways let's get to what we've been building up to 
the Piston Cup. The race begins to an awful start because lightning spins out from daydreaming of Sally's muffler. But wait, who's that on the comms? It's Doc, and he's wearing the Hornet paint. This is such a satisfying character moment because this shows that Doc, you know, became self-aware that he was being a stubborn little bitch. But also, the crowd recognizes him, and then the crowd gives him a standing ovation, goes insane. They all raise their suspensions and honk. I know I'm not supposed to compare this to the human world, but this is like when Brendan Fraser came back and everyone was like, Wee! and on top of that, the gang is there and Mater finally gets to say goodbye. Goodbye! So we continue the race and Lightning is doing well until Chick gives Lightning a flat tire. And this is a big deal because his tire changing team now is just Luigi and Guido. How can they possibly change tires quick without a full team? Oh, the race keeps going on, but Chick spins Lightning out and Lightning is completely sideways and it's not looking good until Lightning remembers Doc's drifting advice from earlier and he hits the drift perfectly. This shit is hype. The race continues and it's a close one until Chick slams the king and the king has one of the worst car crashes I've ever seen. I don't know how he survived this. Then Doc sees this and practically relives all of his trauma. Lightning sees the king as Doc now because they both had nasty crashes and how after the crash, no one gave him a second chance. So you know what Lightning did? He breaks before the finish line, puts that thing in reverse, and helps the king finish his last race. Lightning gave him a second chance and second place. But what brought tears to my eyes was this. You just gave up the piston cut. Just an empty cup. An empty cup. The crowd goes wild. Sally's turned on. Chick is booed. Lightning gets a kiss from the king's wife. Fucking baller. And Dino Co. approaches Lightning for a sponsorship. And this is a huge deal because Lightning had a full-on wet dream about her earlier. But Lightning declines and stays with Rusty's. But the Dino Co. CEO says, well, if there's anything I can do, let me know. And then Lightning says, wait, there is something you can do and I will let you know. And then we cut to Mater having his wish come true and he's flying in a helicopter. Oh my God. This movie is just so wholesome. On top of this, you got Luigi and Guido finally meeting a Ferrari. And then Sally and Lightning are together now. And then Radiator Springs is now put on the map because of Lightning. This is Cars 1. This is cinema. Guys, I have a confession. I have not seen Cars 3, but I intentionally did it for you, for the video. Let's go watch it. So, I am sorry about um, this weird angle. I originally thought I was gonna do like a whole scripted section for Cars 3, but I can't. I am paused on Cars 3 right now at an hour and eight minutes in, and what the hell am I watching? I'm glad that I planned to title this video in defense of Cars rather than Cars and Cars 3 because I do not like this movie. And I was gonna wait until the movie's over, but I need to, I need to get it out now. They massacred my boy. What if all of the Godfather was just like spoken in California accents? Look how they massacred my boy. So I got my phone here and I'm taking notes during the movie so I don't forget stuff when, you know, I was supposed to like script this. This is me just ranting on the couch, okay? Buckle up. First thing I realized, Doc is dead? and it just happened off screen. It just feels weird that Doc is dead. Maybe I do actually want to see Doc die, or at least like, I, I don't physically want to see his car shut down, but like, he's just dead. Another thing I've noticed is that since this is a lot more of a modern movie, obviously the animation is a lot better versus, I, I think the original came out in what, 2005, 2006? However, it's kind of a mixed bag for me because the environments look hyper realistic. Like you can see like every crack in the car concrete uh, of like you know the roads and the grass and the water looks super pristine and it looks like hyper realistic and i'm not sure if it really fits because the cars are stylized they're not hyper realistic cars so it's weird to have stylized cars in hyper realistic environments i will say the lighting and the shadows in this movie are really great there was a shot earlier in the movie where it's like a night race and they have a shit ton of lights lined up around the track and when uh lightning was pulling over to go to a pit stop you can see all the different shadows from like the strip of lights it was sick it was it was a cool detail okay i think that's as far 
far as like my positives go. Another thing I noticed, the music in this movie is bad. Like the licensed music. Like the original soundtrack is actually kind of good. Okay, that's my last compliment. But the licensed stuff, like nothing is even coming close to Life is a Highway or Real Gone. Anyways, now let's get into the meat of the film. So the whole conflict of the film is that Lightning is getting too old and these young racers are picking up on new technology that's making them faster on the track. And since Lightning is more of a traditional outdated type racer he's like I need I need to get I need to keep up with these guys or uh, like I'm gonna be forced into like retirement and then he's like well I have to train like these younger kids so Rusty sells off their company to this guy Sterling who owns the training facility and in the training facility we meet a car named Cruz and she's kind of like a stereotype like trainer just like get into it get into it all right now bring up those RPMs what is there I don't think it's this your is lunch. And it's just like right off the bat, I kind of don't like her because like, shut up, you know? She's she's like overly animated, not like physically, but like just she's overwritten as a trainer woman. That's right, get him, get him, Mr. McQueen. And she's not like the worst character, but like she's definitely not likable, which is awful because she has taken up like 60% of the runtime and they try to make you care about her. And they, we, I, we just got this back and forth between her and Lightning that, oh, I, I wish I was like, I actually wanted to be a racer growing up, but then like I, I gave up. It, it was just like the basic scene where the writers are like, oh yeah, I feel bad about this character. Instead of it just like naturally progressing into like, oh yeah, I actually, I like this character. It's just so forced and just like, like, guys, do you care? Because I have a sad backstory. But like the backstory is just like out of nowhere kind of. And within the first 20 minutes of this, I was concerned about the humor. Oops, hold on, gotta stay. <laughs> that gum, I lost it. Hey, I'll see you close. And remember how earlier in the video I was I was saying like, oh Mater, I thought Mater was just gonna be a goofball, but he's actually like, he's actually pretty wholesome. He, he's got a good friend vibe to him. Well, in this movie, he is literally just a goofball. Here's the thing about cars, right? This is the reason why I made this video to defend like cars is like, yeah, I get it. The Cars universe is strange because of the implications. And I get that this story doesn't have to exist in a Cars world. Like I get that. But the thing is the first Cars movie had heart in it, okay? It had heart, and the characters seemed like down-to-earth people, and there was relatability in that. But now, I'm like watching this movie, and I'm like, okay, like, I feel like I'm in the boat of what people were saying about Cars 1. I'm still defending Cars 1, though. There's so much filler BS going on, too. There's a random scene, it takes up like 10 minutes of the movie, where Lightning, McQueen, and Cruz accidentally get into this derby figure eight, like, knockout competition, and then it's just, it's, it's just not engaging at all. This movie, just so far should have only been 30 minutes. There's like no sense of progression right now. We're still in the same spot as we were 30 minutes ago. Lightning still needs to train and he hasn't. And there's so much of this movie that is like, oh, Doc was such a great mentor. Doc was so great. And then we get flashback scenes. It's like, <laughs> oh, Lightning. It's like, that's not how Doc acted in the first movie. Give it too much trouble, you in the tulip. <laughs> And there is a singing car. Am I the only one tripping out on this? What is this? And something I have just noticed. You know, I let it slide one time, but now I'm calling it out. Why is there so many dialogue scenes in the dark, like pitch black? It is really giving off that they either ran out of budget or just got lazy during making this movie and no one really cared. Eight minutes probably worth of movie then pitch black. All you can see is the car animated. Everything behind them is just blacked out. I don't know, man. There's 30 minutes left. This last 30 minutes a better bang because because like, I'm not a fan of this movie. Honestly, right now this movie is at, honestly, it's at a three. Anyways, I'll see you in 30 minutes. I, I am speechless, guys. It's not even 30 minutes later. It's like 15. Remember the uh, Cruise character that I told you about? Lightning McQueen just pulled over for a pit stop and said, No, not me. Her. <laughs> what? Today's the day, Cruz. You're getting your shot. What? I started this race, and you're gonna finish it. The main character of this movie is Cruz, and they didn't do a good job 
at making her like super likable. This is so insane. I came here to see Lightning McQueen's final race, seeing what wholesome way he goes out. Like even if he doesn't win, what's the message? Do you know how like when you pull over for a pit stop, it's usually for a quick gas fill up or a quick tire fill up? Ramon is there and he, she's, she's getting a new paint job. We don't have time for a paint job. And she's gonna win the race, isn't she? She's gonna win against the main, the, the storm guy that goes 210 miles per hour. And it's not even set up that she can go that fast. The top speed we've seen her at is 193. This might be your last chance. Which makes it my last chance to give you your first chance, Cruz. Look, this could have worked if they made her like character intro a little bit better. And they just said there's a rule where you can swap racers as long as they're wearing the number. So as long as she's wearing 95, she can go race for him. Let's see what happens with McQueen's arc. Maybe they'll do something genius. Lightning just gives away, gives like a, a racer her, her first chance, which is great, right? But like, I need a close, I, I need a, some sort of closure with Lightning and his racing career. And if it's just handing it off, like that's a nice gesture, but like an hour and 10 minutes has been getting McQueen ready for this race. And then Cruz's character is just not built up that well for, for this to feel like wholesome. Okay, I'm not talking till the end, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh man. So Cruz takes over Lightning McQueen. Lightning becomes the crew chief. So I guess the writers thought, he's just like Doc. Doc was his crew chief. If we make him the crew chief, he's like Doc. It's wholesome, right? Listen, if you want to make that arc, hype Cruz up like having her own race. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to swap out racers, do it before the race. Like during the race just felt really like plot twist. And it was just like, it, it's not believable. And when you've been like anticipating how Lightning is going to perform and then they just pull a switcheroo with like the sidekick of the movie, it's just, it, it's just it, like, no. By the way, it's Cruz's first race ever. Everyone else on the track has raced a bunch of times even though they're rookies like they, they at least have a few under their belt Cruz ends up winning this race and it's her first race like she has training experience because she is the trainer but like she wins the storm guy she was going 208 miles per hour the way that she wins is that he kind of slams her against the wall and then she does a, a, a flip over him and wins the race she does a flip over him if I was the writer I would have wrote that Johnny, I think his name is Johnny Storm. I would just say that like he would see that she's in second place and then he would just do something stupid and cocky because he kind of has that cocky ego side to him because he's been winning all these races and he's a rookie. So it's kind of like the ego was the downfall of the main racer. Like logically that dude should have won because he has a lot more experience. And I don't think Cruz like realistically should have been last place or anything. I think Cruz can put up a hell of a race because she is the trainer in that facility. She knows, but it's like when it's your first race and you're beating a dude on his hot streak, it just, it's, it's a little unbelievable. To put the Harry on top. She does like her little victory celebration, drives over to Lightning McQueen, and then we see on the LED screen that the winner is Cruz Ramirez and also Lightning McQueen. And then they're like, how did Lightning win? They're like, because he started the race. Why is my name up there? You started the race. Bro, what? With this logic, that you can swap racers and, and just, just, you know, have the same number. Literally, every car should just gas themselves out for the first 200 laps and then swap it with a crewmate and then they just go full sprinting the last 200 laps and they win every single time. Like, like there's a loophole in that. There's a plot hole. Swapping out racers in the middle of the race is stupid. I'm sorry, it is. On the bright side though, um, Lightning's racing days aren't over. Uh, they still said at the end that like Lightning can still race, but like there's kind of just a big question mark about that because he didn't really learn anything. Here's what they should have done, right? Literally 80% of this movie is Lightning training and like the struggles that he's having with training. Take all of that out. Make that like 10 minutes where he's trying to train, but he just doesn't feel it and then sees potential in her, and we know that she is getting into the race, and then we can see him as a crew chief. It just makes more sense, it's more believable. I still don't really like it, but like, it's better than this. And at the very end, 
they race at the classic, you know, dirt trail in uh, Radiator Springs. And Lightning comes out wearing Doc's skin, pretty much. So Lightning is blue with like the fabulous Lightning McQueen. It's like, like, why is it so corny, bro? Like, I get like he likes him, but he's like wearing his skin. And then I think on the back of his car, it said, this one is for Doc. Who is writing this? People might be thinking I'm thinking too deep, but no. I grew up on these characters. I want a good closing for my boy. And it's just kind of like a loose end. It didn't feel like a Cars movie. It felt like a spinoff for the Cruise, the Cruise character. I didn't like it. You know what? I'm giving Cars 1 an 8 out of 10. It has a lot of heart. Um, Cars 3 though, yeah, I think it stays at a 3 out of 10. I apologize that like, you know, I was here doing the couch rant rather than doing a properly like, I don't, you can't blame me though, right? The couch rant is kind of valid, right? Because I was gonna watch the movie in its completion, write down my notes, write a script about it, but I am fired up. So this is what you got, I'm sorry. This is from the heart though, unlike Cars 3. Thank you guys for watching. If you watched to the end, um, let me know what you think about Cars 3 in the comments. I am, I'm curious to see what you guys thought of it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Thank you once again for watching, for real. Stay safe out there guys. I'll see you in the next one, bye.